Hello everybody and welcome to the latest edition of Downtime Videos for Conductors. My name is Anthony Hermes, I'm a principal guest conductor at the North Netherlands Orchestra and a principal guest conductor at Opera North and a regular guest professor at the Conservatory of Amsterdam. Little more than a week ago I was still rehearsing Rusalka at ENO in London when the message came that our production had been cancelled due to the situation around the virus two weeks before opening night. That was quite a disappointment as you can imagine and now I'm back in Amsterdam in my apartment and yesterday our Dutch government decided that our lockdown period need to be extended until the 1st of June. Probably for a lot of you, many things that you were looking forward to were cancelled. Some lessons, some masterclasses, some rehearsals you were supposed to do, or some concerts that maybe you even organized yourself. Maybe even your final exam would have taken place in this period it has now been cancelled. Somehow it sounds amazing. I counted from now on nine weeks until the 1st of June, nine weeks time to relax, time to finally do what I always wanted to do, time to study what I always wanted to study, to watch and to read what I always wanted to watch and to read. But since the situation of health in the Netherlands is at the moment very worrying and that I had to deal with quite a lot of disappointment that many things where I was looking forward to were cancelled, I noticed myself that it was very hard for me to focus and to be at least kind of productive especially the first days when I was back here in Amsterdam, I found it really hard to get something concrete out of my hand. So to stay healthy in mind and body and to use my personal downtime the next nine weeks in a good and productive way, I developed some little and small tricks. And I want to share these little and small tricks with you on this video. Number one, the first few days at home, I noticed that I was quite a lot on my computer. Facebook and Twitter, and I was a lot on news sites and read all kinds of news and also a lot of fake news about the virus. Well, I noticed it really affected my mood a lot. I became very sad, extremely worried and also quite anxious. So for a few days, I decided not to read any news anymore. Only once a day, in the beginning of the evening. At that moment, I read on a neutral news site the most important things. And that's enough. And I also go only one or two times a day on social media. Well, I can't tell you how much that helps me to stay normal and focused. Number two, we conductors are normally expected to be quite disciplined persons. But I don't know how it is with you, but as a friend of mine said it for a few days, well, I am much more effective in learning a score when I know I have to prepare the score for a rehearsal in two weeks, than I, that I start preparing now this score for somewhere in two months time. A little pressure helps us all to stay productive. And since there will be absolutely no real pressure for me the coming nine weeks, I decided that each evening I make my plans for the next day and I write them down. As leadership, leadership guru Robin Sharma says, the things that are scheduled are the things that get done. Which piece do I want to study tomorrow? Who do I want to call tomorrow? Who do I need to write tomorrow? And what do I want to read tomorrow? And also at the end of the, each day, I reflect in my little journal what I all did that day. I think it's very important at the end of each day to be aware of what you have been doing the whole day. And uh, the two scores that I'm diving in at the moment, I want to share that, of course, um, that's a Tannhäuser Overture. Um, for a concert that maybe takes place in the beginning of June. And yesterday arrived the score of 
for Puccini's Fanciulla del West, so for next year. So I'm, I have a lot to do. <laughs> Number three, when you have nothing to do, it's quite seducing to stay in bed a little longer after waking up. And I have to say that I'm personally really fond of the snooze button on my alarm. But since a few days I did a little trick, I put my alarm on further distance of my bed, so I have to get out of bed when the alarm goes. I can tell you how confronting that it is sometimes, but I noticed for myself that these morning hours are mostly my most productive ones. And since a few days, I start each day with a little exercising also to get my energy flowing and also some meditation to get my energy high. And then I start my day as I planned it the night before. Number four, I started cleaning my house and in particularly my score library. It's very interesting and inspiring what you all find, <laughs> what you all find that you don't know that it was there anymore. <laughs> so also cleaning your house is also a little bit of cleaning your mind and rethinking and reflecting where you are at this moment and where you want to go in the future. Number five, I started to read some books again. Yes, on my balcony. I have a little balcony here now in Amsterdam, even if it's quite cold at the moment. First one is a great book. I'll show it to you. It's Walking Up the Mountain Track by Erik Schoenes. It's about how the old instrumental masters studied and performed. And it has some great conversations and interviews uh, with a lot of great instrumentalists and also conductors about how they study and what is important for them during the study process. And I also want to show you the other book that I started to read. It's a biography of Apple man, Steve Jobs, a charismatic personality who had a fascinating life path and a special gift for leadership and thinking out of the box. Six, I started watching rehearsals of great conductors. To watch rehearsals can be endlessly inspiring or not. <laughs> Every conductor is facing more or less the same challenges. How do you shape the music and how do I communicate my vision of the music in such a way that 100 musicians or more will follow me? Well, if you go on YouTube and you search on great conductors rehearsals, you find many, 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 many fantastic rehearsals. My favorites are Celi Bidake with Bruckner, uh, Prêtre with Prelude à l'après-midi, uh, Janssons with Miraculous Mandarin, Bernstein with Sacre, Karajan, Schumann IV, and of course, Kleiber with Fledermaus and Freischutz Overture. Just genial. Number seven, conducting is a profession where you really need to be in shape, both physically and mentally. And I think therefore it's important to plan every day some kind of little sport activity, a little jogging or cycling or some living room exercises. And as a conductor, communication is very important for us. Our Dutch government talks about social distancing and I personally would rather call it physical distancing because of the virus. I think that at this high point of the virus outbreak, it's extremely important to keep at least one and a half meter of real physical distance of everybody around you. But it's also very important to keep your social contacts alive over WhatsApp video, Zoom, FaceTime. It is difficult at the moment, especially for the friends and colleagues that live alone. Maybe eat together, have a drink together, work together, laugh together, all virtually, and keep checking in with each other. And number eight, the last one. We are conductors. We are trained, or we are getting trained, to take the lead, to be a leader and to inspire other persons. I think this is more than ever the time 
that every leader needs to show its true character to the world and that music and culture can support people in difficult circumstances. So that's one of the reasons that I also offered myself to a help force in the neighborhood here in Amsterdam to do shopping for some elderly and ill people or to phone every day with a person that lives isolated. I think it's important to take care for each other more than ever. Well, that's it. I can't make such a great cocktail as Mark did in that video number five. But um, I take this great good glass of wine to say cheers to you all. Please stay safe, stay healthy, stay inspired and keep inspiring. Many greetings from Amsterdam.